Now the technology's here and the software's here too. It behooves all of these apps to make it as straightforward as possible so that they can have more people making content all the time. Welcome back to Organist Launchpad. I'm Wesley Hall, and in this video, we're gonna talk about specific social media apps that you can use to advance your artistic and creative goals. And we're gonna get into details about leveraging each of them in a specific way so that you can be most effective in that process. So let's start with the new juggernaut, TikTok. TikTok has changed everything. TikTok popped up as a very um, silly app Early on, it was a lot about dances, acting out music, and it came out of the tradition of Vine, where you would make these very short videos. You were really limited in, in what you had available to you, and it bred a certain type of creativity. Twitter bought it, and they killed it off, and TikTok emerged from the ashes, and they had 15-second videos, and a lot of people who had enjoyed Vine started to use it. But over time, TikTok started to catch on more and more, and you could do 30-second videos, then 45 seconds, finally a minute, and then, three minutes, and that was a game changer. Now you can record 10 minute videos in TikTok, which is really starting to approach long form content. So these were uh, the shot heard around the world for platforms like Meta, which is Facebook and Instagram, and for Google, who holds YouTube. And all of these other apps had to change their game plan. So Instagram, which used to be very much a visual photograph platform in its early days, and then was absorbed by Facebook, they added reels, which are short form videos, very much in the style of TikTok. And even YouTube itself, which has been the longtime champion since it emerged in, I think, 2006, they unveiled these things called shorts. And it's clear that uh, once TikTok hit and had huge market penetration, everyone else had to respond. So TikTok is a really interesting platform because it has a constant feed scroll. So you never interface with pages like you do on Instagram or something like that. You just open the app and you keep scrolling and scrolling. And it shows you all sorts of things that it thinks you might want to see. It has an audience of over a billion people. And I guarantee you that somewhere out there, no matter how niche your content is, no matter how specific to the pipe organ, to some little part of the pipe organ your content is, someone's going to want to see it and chances are very good that they're going to find it. So TikTok is a wonderful place to start out because the videos that you make on TikTok, you can also share to Instagram and you can also share to YouTube Shorts. The other thing is that the actual video processing within TikTok is very intuitive and it's very straightforward. Technology used to be so complex. Some of you will remember back to the Paleolithic era of the 1990s and technology was really, really complicated. It wasn't uncommon to get a computer and the same year you would need uh, another computer because you couldn't run a new program that came out. Now the technology's here and the software's here too. UI and UX has come leaps and bounds and it, it behooves all of these apps to make it as straightforward as possible so that they can have more people making content all the time. So if you have never touched a video editing software before, I guarantee that with really within just a few minutes, you can get a very good sense of how to make videos. And you can record them within the app itself. It's easy to upload them and then it's easy to upload them to other sites. Instagram provides something that TikTok doesn't have, which is sort of the idea of a website. When people follow you on Instagram, even if, it's this, even if it's a reel that was the same video you put up on TikTok, they can immediately see a lot about you. They can go to your page and they can see um, a cultivated description of who you are as an artist, complete with photographs, link to your website if you have one, and then little updates and stories about your life. Those come from Snapchat and TikTok has them as well as Instagram, but Instagram is still the market leader when it comes to sharing those personal elements of yourself. Another interesting thing to note about Instagram is that a huge percentage of all reels have the TikTok watermark on them, which means that someone made the video on TikTok and then shares it again to Instagram to benefit from those other elements of Instagram like connecting with your audience. So TikTok is a great place for you to make your content and get it out to a huge wide swath of people. It's also a place where a lot of younger people are. Instagram is skewing a little bit older and hits the millennial generation, which is mine a little bit more and uh, TikTok skews down below to Gen Z and Gen Alpha. Now let's talk about YouTube, the longtime market leader. It is the king of long form video content online. It has very dedicated user bases. Subscribing to a creator that you like on YouTube is 
a big thing. It means you're giving them your attention for a long period of time. It means you're going to get notifications about when they put up new videos. But it also demands a lot of the creators. I do not recommend starting on YouTube. YouTube can be absolutely demoralizing for a creator. And after all of these years, YouTube's been around for almost 20 years now, it is still hard to know how the algorithm works. It's still really hard to know what will succeed and what just won't. The shorts are changing that a little bit. So there's less risk. You can make short videos and put them up and that some of them will go really well and can draw viewers to your main YouTube page if you want. But the problem is that YouTube videos take so much time to make. They take real editing time and traditional sort of old school video editing. You can do that, and if you enjoy doing that, please, by all means, do it. But it requires so much time that sometimes if the benefits aren't there immediately, it can be pretty demoralizing. So I recommend starting with a platform like TikTok or like Instagram Reels to get started. So this is where we need to ask ourselves and say, what are my goals? Because all of these apps, including Facebook, which, which we won't talk about so much specifically, suffice it to say that Instagram will also push Reels to Facebook since they're part of the same parent company. But it's really important to figure out what are we trying to do here. If your goal is to be a concert artist and a performer, really YouTube might be the best match for you. You might want to have whole concerts or examples of pieces that you like to play on YouTube. And if that's the case, you, you might really want to do some shorter form videos to build up an audience and then say, okay, once you have 10,000 people following you on TikTok or something, 20,000, 30,000, then you can say, now, follow me over to YouTube, or you like this video, watch the full thing on YouTube. Um, that's a really smart way to do it, and you can kind of help jump past that initial step that's really, really challenging and time-consuming. It gives you a leg up. If, on the other hand, you're trying to be an educator, YouTube might be the place to start. And there are ways to do videos now with just your smartphone where you just set it up on a horizontal field and uh, speak into your cell phone's microphone. It's fairly straightforward. And that way you can still cut out a lot of the video editing that's necessary for um, high production videos and just talk about the instrument. There's always a good chance that people, especially with mechanical things and the contraption element of the organ, that they'll find you as well. But make sure that you, again, don't spend a lot of time on video editing early on because it can be so demoralizing. If you're trying to be famous, say, which I'm not judging, or if you're trying to be an entertainer, you might really wanna just stick to Instagram. You might wanna say, well, I want people to know about me. I want people to see updates about my life, where I'm traveling, what I'm doing. If you want that lifestyle element, then Instagram is probably the spot for you. Why not throw your cards in with TikTok as well, just to broaden your audience? So this is where you have to say, who do I wanna be? What am I trying to accomplish? And how do I leverage each app and program to maximize my time, the amount of time I have to spend on production and playing, and then spend more time that I actually wanna do this thing that I do, which is performing or teaching or entertaining. Stick with us for the next part where we're going to talk about very specific do's and don'ts, things to keep in mind while making content, things that might kind of save you a little bit of time.